Hello, I'm attorney Tammy Saltzman and you are watching Divorce Connection Network. Today I am so pleased to intro introduce all of you to Charles Jameson. Hi Charles, how are you? I'm doing great Tammy and yourself today. Very good, thanks for joining us. Charles is an attorney, he's got over 25 years of experience here in Florida, he practiced before and he specializes in family law, he's collaboratively trained and he believes in amicable divorce and we're going to hear his best tips for you if you are contemplating or going through a divorce, what you should be thinking about. So Charles, tell us, what's your first tip? Well, my first tip is get a hold of yourself financially. What's your financial situation? Which means getting all your records together and getting a handle on what are your assets, what are your debts, what's the income of the parties. Make sure you get all the documents that you, ha that you need to support that, that kind of information. Best ones income tax returns, copies of your uh, bank accounts, checking, cash, stock accounts, retirement accounts, and also don't forget anything else that might be coming into the family, such as, and going out of the family, such as your monthly payments and those types of things. Right, mortgage payments, car payments, insurance payments, health insurance, car insurance, all of those expenses are contemplated and they go on what's called a financial affidavit. And everyone needs to fill out a financial affidavit so that they can amicably understand what their needs are, what their assets are, and what their debts are. Number, number two, I think one of the most important things that people are leaving out during the course of their divorce our disability insurance policies. We, as attorneys, we look at the statutes, and the statutes tell us in terms of alimony or child support that we need to be looking at life insurance. But what, we, what the statutes ignore and what we don't understand as individuals, we're two to three times more likely to become disabled than we are to die during the time period in which you might be paying child support or a set period of alimony. So disability insurance is very important. It's often a benefit, at least for short-term disability, uh, that's offered by employment, and it's really not all that inexpensive if you've got people in relatively good health who are working regularly. So that's a big thing that's often overlooked. Okay, so the reason why you would need disability insurance is if you are relying on alimony and child support from your spouse and they become disabled, how do you expect for them to continue with their payments? Life insurance would only cover you if you were to die. If that spouse were to die, then you would get a benefit. But if they were to get injured, if they were in a car accident, if they had a heart attack and they needed months to recover and they weren't getting income during that time, that's where the disability insurance would kick in. Great point. What's your third tip? Third tip, mental health coaching. One of the biggest things that we go through, whether we're male, female, where we've been divorced once, twice, or more than twice, is we go through this roller coaster of emotions. And whether you subscribe to the Kubler-Ross stages of grief, or you just say people have to deal with intense emotions when they're suffering a loss, you need some, some guidance. And the best way to get that guidance, and the least expensive way to get that guidance, is through a mental health professional. And will also save you money. Yes. It saves you money because if you're not going to have someone guide you through that process, you inevitably are going to turn to the other professional that you have retained. That's the attorney. Now, we are empathetic. We want to help guide you through the system. But we are not trained, nor are we equipped to best guide you through this process. And what's going to happen is we will very empathetically listen to you on your phone calls, but you're going to be charged at our hourly rate. So I always advise my clients, please, please, please get someone to help coach you along the way here. So mental health counselors come in all shapes, all forms. There's lots of different avenues you can take. Your health insurance policies all have providers on there that you can go to and just make a copay. A lot of times churches and temples and Jewish federations have sliding scales. Sometimes the services are offered even for free. There are divorce coaches out there, people who take you from beginning to end and help you step by step go through the process. Many, many, many mental health professionals have been on the show and you can go into the archives and select from many different people if you get a good vibe. But that is something that's really important to note because you're going to go through those stages. You know, I've been divorced. I work 
as a divorce attorney, you know, your first emotion is disbelief. You can't even believe that you're getting divorced. You're almost in denial about it. Then comes fear. You're scared. How am I going to survive? What am I going to do? We can only help you through the business part of it, the divorce. We can't help you through the emotional. And you start reaching out to family members who think they know the answers, but every divorce is different. What your neighbor got is not necessarily what you're going to get. And sometimes you are misled down the wrong path and have expectations that we cannot solve for you. And that's very true. And the other things that they can help us with is how, how do we best communicate with our children during this very troubling time? Yes, very important. They can coach us on how do we deal with a spouse when we're having a little problems in communication. In other words, we have to learn a whole new way to communicate with our divorcing spouses than we did before. We may be locked in traps in various ways of non or dysfunctional communication. We have to learn those things that help us out later. Another tip that I have for people are getting divorces. Don't think so much of indemnification if your spouse does something wrong financially. Think in terms of credit rehabilitation. Now there's a difference. Okay. In every kind of divorce, whether it's a temporary relief order or a final order, you're going to have financial obligations that one spouse or the other are going to have to meet. There may be mortgage payments that have to be made, credit card payments that have to be made, that type of thing. What you want is a clause that says if a payment that's supposed to be made is not going to be made, you're given prior notice of it. And in the event that those payments are not made, that that spouse is financially responsible for rehabilitating your credit rating. Because the damage is not necessarily is the payment not made. The damage may be done and it may last up to seven to ten years to your credit rating. Now that, what that clause does, rather than a, a bring whole clause that we usually see, is that it provides the opportunity for a financial professional to sit down and put a dollar sign to what it's going to cost you or what it has cost you on that. So it's a okay. whole different way of looking at that. It is a whole different way of looking at it. I try whenever I'm, you know, negotiating to put the power with the person who's, you know, instead of making a spouse responsible for making the payment, make that person responsible. So the spouse pays the other spouse and that spouse makes those payments. So you're not relying on someone and you're not constantly seeing a late payment, late payment, late payment, which could ultimately affect your credit. And many spouses' credits are affected. And credit restoration is important. And you can find information about credit restoration on our website. Another, uh, another tip would be for beware of social media. I think as attorneys, oh, great. we're always preaching about Stay away from social media, stay away from social media. There's nothing that you can put on social media about your spouse or about your divorce that's going to help you. And in fact, there's probably nothing that you can put on social media, what trips you take, what you're buying, where you're going, what you're doing, that's going to be helpful. So deactivate. If you can't deactivate, post as little as possible. The best thing you can say is nothing about your divorce. Ask your friends, your significant others, don't post anything about my divorce. And But there are other issues on social media that we have to look out or the Internet. Gambling sites. It's easier to get subpoena records from Internet gambling sites than it is from actual casinos. So <laughs> beware of that. Number two, That's we've seen important. from the Ash, or the next one, AshleyMadison.com recently. Oh, yes. Stay off of dating sites, even if it may have nothing to do with your divorce and it all has come in on afterwards. It can only incite your spouse, make him or her angry, and make your case more difficult to, uh, to settle or more difficult to resolve. Another one that I always look to is these uh, you know, multiplayer games like the most recent popular one, the, uh, well, uh, the War Warcraft or whatever they call it. They had Sim Society. What happens is you get an avatar or a fake identity that you act out in these multi-scenes uh, uh, episodes and what happens is if that comes up and you're a rampaging lunatic on that the judge may have a tendency to think you're a rampaging lunatic and you give me as an attorney the opportunity to say the way you act there is the way you act in your in your divorce is the way you act in your life so keep off of those things and again my basic advice is stay off of social media and remember even if you deactivate even if you delete it is a possibility it, well, it's not a possibility, it's a probability that all these things are going to be subpoenaed, and we're seeing more and more in our divorce cases subpoenas for social media. 
Yeah, and it's not even just social media. It's also text messaging with someone sending X-rated pictures of yourself over the Internet or through your cell phone. It, you would be surprised at how many ways an angry spouse can go around and find things to use against you in a case. Quite often, a lot of times, people meet someone new and they start posting about their new boyfriend or their new girlfriend. Very bad thing when you're going through a divorce. It's not even a good thing after your divorce, but especially during your divorce. And I'm a firm believer, and many people have heard me say this, if you have nothing good to say, say nothing. Bashing your spouse publicly can only come back to hurt you in the end. And as a final tip as we're ending here today, don't be afraid to utilize less adversarial or litigation modes of resolving your divorce. There's mediation, there's what I call kitchen table negotiation, collaborative divorce, and I'm sure your archives have all kinds of shows on those things. You know from watching the show, I always say, in litigation, the only ones who win are the lawyers. Always, always try to resolve your case as amicably as possible to keep the most of your marital assets intact. Thanks so much for watching us today, Charles. Thank you so much for coming down and joining us. You can find Charles's information on our website. He's located in West Palm Beach. Go to divorceconnectionnetwork.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.